here are a few quotes from uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And I like to call him Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. because the world has conveniently forgotten that he was a minister. Um, you know, the, the secular society would love to, to would, would love, if they could have changed it, they would love to make him just a civil rights leader and um, a social, right, social activist. But he was a minister and his highest motivation came from um, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the, the, uh, the traditions of the church, you know, um, the, 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 the tradition of, of, of that root is rooted in love and justice and care for all and recognition of um, everyone as being made in the image and likeness of God. Here are some things that um, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had to say. And, and, and this one, this first one is, is, is one that you, I'm sure you're familiar with because it's one that is oft quoted. He said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Two, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Another one, the time is always right to do what is right. Another one. A riot is the language of the unheard. And um, I, I don't want to dwell on this to say that you know he was necessarily um, advocating violence, but he was making a point, a realistic point. A riot is the language of the unheard. Another one. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies. I love this. In the end, we will not remember. We, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. I'll give you just a couple more. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. One more. Another one. Um life's most res uh, persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others and uh, there is this other one that i think is fairly fairly well known to we must we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools and um, and i think this one is probably my favorite um, of his of his statements the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And those are some quotes from... Um, Dr. King, and uh, I want to, on this MLK Day, I wish you um, a happy MLK Day, a happy day, that today will be a good and reflective day for you. But there are some things I want to highlight about um, MLK um, that I think are important reminders for us. Number one, there are several things, and I'm not, not going to linger on them, on any of them for too long, just so that I get to the list um, quickly. He, he was a scholar. And, and by the way, I'm not putting these in order of merit. I'm just putting them as I, uh, thought, of, as I thought of them and, and noted them. So he was a scholar. And by the way, um, for those of you who, who, are, not, um, who, who are not familiar with uh, the name Morehouse. Morehouse is, a, is an all-boys all um, college. It is Morehouse is... I hate the term, but folks often refer to it as the Black Harvard. It is a black school. You know, in, in America, there is what is called traditionally black colleges, um, t uh, TBC, or I think it is some other abbreviation, but it's traditionally black colleges. And Morehouse is one of them, and um, that's where Dr. King um, graduated. And uh, he started out slow as a, as a person generally in, in, in scholarship and school, but he, he became, you know, Dr. King, <laughs> you know, 
Um, so Morehouse is an all boys school, and and um, right next to it, near to it, you have Spellman, which is the all girl girls school. So just sort of a general good information to know. But I'm saying part of the reason he was as effective as he was was because he was a scholar, um, and that should never be lost on us at all. We should not miss that that he was a scholar. Number two, he was influenced by Mahatma Gandhi, um, Mohandas Gandhi. Later on, we called him Mahatma. Uh, and that's a different story by itself, but Gandhi was um, big on non-violence and so King was influenced by Gandhi's non-violent approach. Um, and at a different time I may talk about how Gandhi was not someone who loved and favored black people. Um, and you know that's something that has been coming up in conversations among scholars in this era of Black Lives Matter movement and so forth. Um, the next thing I want to note is that um, Dr. King was a pastor. He was the pastor of a church. So he had a congregation, he had a flock. Um, and that itself brought a certain level of power, prestige, privilege, and responsibilities. Um, and so those of us who are pastors must not take it lightly at all what that means in the broader scheme of things. Uh, next thing I want to note is that Dr. King had... He, he, he was actually, um, in some research, you find that uh, there is some indication that he had some fellows around him that formed a sort of regiment. Let me put this another way. Dr. King talked non-violence, but he was no fool. They had their, their people, they had their team in place for protection and to take care of things. So he wasn't going to just let you slap him on the cheek and turn the other one, in other words. Um, you know, and, and there was some there's some information about that sort of thing that is not well published or publicized. Because people would like you to think, well, he was just a non a fellow who preached nonviolence and you could do whatever you want to him and to his movement. Um but he had he had he had his regiment. Uh I want to also note that his phone was bugged many times by the FBI. Um, you know, in, there's ample information about that. And not only did they bug the phone, but they threatened him because um, at one time he had he had a girlfriend. He was married, but he had a relationship with someone else. Um, and of course, you know, he, the profile of the man would merit um, scrutiny and uh, and spying on him and so on. So they found out and they threatened him. In fact, there is some document documentary um in which it is noted that they actually the fbi actually encouraged him to commit suicide because of the the level of shame that they were going to bring on him on account of having discovered that he he um he, he stepped out of line uh in terms of stepping outside of his marriage boundaries um, but that just that goes to show you um how far the systems would go and I'll end my comment uh, um, shortly with, with um, talking about the importance of systems. But the other thing I want to note is that, um, and I really, really feel strong about this. For years I've been saying this, that the, I have a dream speech and um, people promoting this Dr. King as um, chiefly a man who had a dream, a dream for unity and all love and everybody getting along together in America. Uh, I have I have believed for years, and I still believe this up to today, that it is the greatest injustice um, and the greatest discredit that is done to Dr. King's legacy. His work was not about, was never really about um, some big dream of everybody getting along and, and, and black and white children holding hands and playing together and so on. That was not his goal. It was not, it was, I mean, that was not his ultimate goal and it was not the heart of his work. He was about justice. It was not about just racial equality or racial inclusiveness. It, it was about um, justice and it was about uh, the empowerment of his people and the respect for his people. Um, and of course, with that would come the idea of, of people getting along. But getting along wasn't the, 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 the chief goal. That would have been the, um, the benefit of the goal. Now, um, in saying that, it needs to be pointed out that Dr. King created a lot of trouble for himself. Um, the, the, you see, let me back up. The I Have a Dream speech is, you know, it's held up today because that's 
comfortable and it's wonderful and it's utopian kumbaya people love that but he got himself into trouble when he when he stepped out to support the sanitation workers um so that uh fighting for fair wages for them when he opposed the war in vietnam in 1955 because he was one of the few persons and the most prominent american who stood against the war and he was he was ridiculed and um he was really um called out on that because you know they, they considered it un-american and unpatriotic unpatriot so those are things that he, he did to get himself into trouble the, bo the bus boycott when he told and the boycott of, of white businesses so he said to them that bread you all like wonder bread stop buying it this other drink you like stop buying it we're going to boycott the buses because we're not sitting on any back of any bus anymore we're going to walk and the folks had hoped that they would march and um they would protest for maybe a couple of days or a few weeks but when they realized it turned into over a year so it started hurting them in the pocket and that's when they realized all right we gotta we gotta back up and do something and we gotta do better than that so 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 it was when he took social action that were um influential and impacting that's when he got into trouble and that's when they decided they had to get rid of him because the bible says in ecclesiastes 10 19 and i've said it i i say this all the time and i've said it a thousand times in this forum that the bible says money answer at all things put it another way when you touch certain when you touch the finances of the oppressors then that's when you get into trouble they don't mind all that you have to say as long as what you have to say doesn't affect their their their, their, their purse so let me close with two things one is dr king was quoted to have said i'm afraid that i have won the right to um, incorporate my people into a burning house after and this was said by um, Harry Belafonte which by the way um, I mentioned him earlier and I said I'll come back to him when I'm in a, when I'm closing so let me come back to him he was one of the people who was a real friend to Dr. King Harry Belafonte he's a Jamaican um, he's a Jamaican been here for um, all, uh, almost all his life came to America very early he was the one who popularized Calypso and so on. And some of you know his song, Come Mr. Tallyman, Tally Me Banana, Daylight Come and Me Wan Go Home. Um, and so he's an he's a icon in America and an icon from the island of Jamaica in the West Indies. Harry Belafonte actually was one of Dr. King's friend and a friend in, in need, a friend indeed. He committed himself because he was a celebrity. Um, he committed himself to paying for the education of Dr. King's children. And so um, Dr. King had that confidence that if he should be killed, or, um, uh, uh, as, as was a possibility, that at least one man like Jonathan would be there to do good to his legacy, to his, um, to his, um, and, um, his descendants. And Harry Belafonte actually um, paid for, Help to, help to support the education of Dr. King's children because you know when he died his children were the, the, his children his offsprings were little children when he died and so um uh, Harry Belafonte said in one of his interviews he said that um after they won the, the right to include black people into um into a number of of, of um places and things that they were denied um Dr. King uh, seemed very troubled. They, they were sitting together and he said, Dr. King looked very troubled. They, like something was bothering him. And he asked Dr. King, hey doc, something is bothering you. What's, what's, what's the matter? What's, what's wrong? And that's when Dr. King said to him, I'm afraid I've won the right to include my, my people into a burning house. And so let me close by saying, what, um, Dr. King did some great work, but the two things that we are still to, to do today are to put in place adequate, efficient, effective systems and institutions. Black folks continue to think that um, we, we must just do good deeds and do kind deeds individually and we must do the best we can as individuals. But that is not what change a society. It is systems and institutions that change society. And that's important to note. And again, I say to you, Happy um, MLK Day, and uh, I hope that what I've said offers much. Uh, I know it, I, it offers much for reflection and thought, but I hope it inspires us to serious action um, to the extent that we will really work to create systems and, um, and, and uh, 
institutions. Thank you very much um, for sharing this moment and for listening.